welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I'm actually very excited about this segment because it involves Matt Walsh. And you all know that I love Matt Walsh. He is near and dear to my heart. And it involves Matt Walsh and somebody that he is currently feuding with online, which is one of my favorite things of all time because the man holds nothing back and it's just incredible to watch. And it's just... I feel like I learn so much every time he starts debating with somebody on Twitter. But anyway, before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you are not already, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode, and if you are wanting more information, more content, more time with me, you can always follow me at I'm Brett Cooper on Instagram. I can't promise that I will feud with people like Matt does, but... You know, maybe one day I'll throw my hat in the ring. If you've been on Twitter, you've probably seen this. Matt and Libs of TikTok are going after a person named Eli Elric. Errol, I should look this up. Eli Ehrlich, which is the weirdest name that I have ever heard, runs some sort of like youth transgender coalition, calls themselves like exceptionally queer and is a PhD candidate. So you've got basically the trifecta of wokeness and insufferability. Just saying. Libs of TikTok started this all four days ago and posted this, said, uh, red flag, red flag, red flag, and posted this screenshot from Eli's Instagram. It's a picture of Eli holding up this pill, and he writes, there are over 20 states trying to criminalize hormone therapy, particularly for trans youth. So my friends and I had an idea, sending out our extra prescriptions around the country. If you need hormones, I'm working with a distribution network to get you access. Everything is free, no questions asked. We have hundreds of doses of testosterone, estradiol, and spironolactone available right now. All are prescribed by doctors and unused. Each package comes with information on dosage, obtaining blood work, etc. I realize that this is only a band-aid solution. We need full access to affirmative care from professionals immediately. Let me get this straight. This person is saying they're going to send out prescription drugs to trans people, especially young people, youths, who might not be able to access it, whose parents don't want them to access, who cannot afford it. They're sending out unprescribed medicine to children. That is incredibly illegal. I literally had a doctor's appointment yesterday and I went after I had spent a couple of hours researching all of this and I went into him and he follows the Daily Wire and I said, have you seen this? Like, are we all wrong? Like, is this incredibly illegal? And he was shocked and was going, oh my God, yeah, this person needs to be in jail. And then you look in the comments and somebody says, as much as I love this, we need more covert ways of reaching those in need. Openly announcing such things leads to states making it illegal and punishable by law. First of all, sending prescription drugs illegally is already illegal and punishable by law. Just saying. Eli responds and says, I completely agree. This is just a band-aid solution to something that will have to be solved on the cultural level. I hope someday we can manufacture estrogen ourselves and won't have to depend on pharmacies at all. As for visibility, well, it's a double-edged sword. Without it, too few would know these resources. With it, I'm taking a risk. Granted, a very minimal one being in NYC. Acknowledging, this person is acknowledging that they are doing something illegal but thinks that they are above the law because oh, they live in the communist paradise of NYC. And then finishes off by saying, recipients are very unlikely to face any legal blowback because who's to say I'm not just shipping myself a prescription? Is this person an idiot? You are posting about your illegal activity online involving drugs, involving minors, and saying I'm not gonna face any legal blowback. Now, this post had been up for a couple of months prior to Libs of TikTok finding it, but once she posted this and posted these screenshots, Eli took it down. And his tweets are now also protected, so you can only see them if you follow him. So Eli knows what they are doing is wrong. They know they are being caught, but guys, the fire is just now starting. Yes. The fire rises. Especially because then Matt Walsh jumped in and really started the internet beef. But of course, even though I love this, my favorite beef is still from Good Ranchers. And this month, I am loving them even more because they have committed to giving out 100,000 meals to children in need as they are getting ready to go back to school. If you want to help them make this happen, go to GoodRanchers.com, use promo code COOPER to get $30 off of your order, plus free shipping. And for 10 of you who use that promo code and buy a box from Good Ranchers, you will have the chance to come on a Zoom call with me on September. 29th. We can cook steaks. You can ask me anything. It'll be a really good time and we'll be helping good ranchers with their mission. So again, go to goodranchers.com. Use promo code Cooper. You get $30 off free shipping and we get to hang out. 
And we can talk about our favorite internet beef because that's literally what I live for. Um, And Matt Walsh is giving us all of the content right now. Matt Walsh then jumped in, retweeted the original Libs of TikTok post and said, I'm going to go after this person. This is so wrong. This is disgusting and criminal. And he immediately started bringing it to the attention of the FBI and the DEA. Rightfully so, because this is illegal. He said, submitting a tip to the DEA right now to report Eli Ehrlich's confessed conspiracy to ship prescription hormonal pills to minors nationwide and internationally. Even though he deleted the original post and is protecting his tweets, all of that stuff, Eli is still trying to spin this and act above the law. He posted Matt Walsh's tweet and said, thanks for the free advertising, Matt Walsh and Libs of TikTok official, and tagged them on his Instagram story. Still trying to, you know, make this into some kind of marketing campaign. I hope he's lawyering up. That's all I'm saying. Matt responded with this. He said, Eli is a member of a privileged class and believes that this will all blow over without consequence. That's usually what happens in these situations, but not this time, not when you're giving dangerous drugs to kids. We're not going to let it go. Like that's spinning fire. And he hits the nail on the head because Eli does believe he's part of a privileged class. I mean, he's posting about this publicly and Matt was right. He is not letting it go. He and Libs of TikTok dug deeper and they realized that this illegal drug operation has been going on since last year. There was a post from September 2021 where Eli wrote a list of his 11 mantras that was getting him through the year. And number six was redistribute your extra hormones to people who can't access and afford them. I don't know if this was the first time that he was doing this, but this was the first time that he has, at least on record, publicly said that he was shipping illegal drugs to people, especially minors. And while all of that was happening, he, she was also pushing the assassination of Supreme Court justices. Lips of TikTok posted a screenshot and said, Supreme Court assassination challenge. Because why stop with trans propaganda if you can also try to assassinate Supreme Court justices and get every kind of woke intersectional brownie point that you can from the internet. Not cool. Not f***ing cool. You can see here, this tweet has been deleted. So Eli knows that he got caught. It seems like a trend here with this guy is that he puts all of this disgusting stuff on the internet, people call him on it, and he tries to backtrack it while still being above the law and above criticism. Also, I know that my energy is high and I'm moving through this fast, but Scheller just turned to me and said this man is a psycho, which is exactly how I'm feeling right now. Like, he's a freaking creep. This entire story is just wild and we can go on for hours exposing all of this stuff and talking about him. But the final thing that I want to show before we dive into more of the response is that Eli admitted this whole scheme on video. So he's not just posting about it. He's not just, you know, offering these. He literally acknowledged it on video. A few months ago, I posted on Instagram asking for testosterone for a friend who actually already had a prescription. His doctor was out of town and he couldn't get a new one. Within hours, my story was taken down and I received a warning by the administrators. Now, of course, I know it's against Instagram rules to share substances and I wasn't particularly surprised that it was removed, but I was still upset. So yeah, I know it's illegal, duh. Changing my social security to female without medical treatment. So was crossing the street outside my apartment instead of using the crosswalk. When it comes to legal shit, be careful, but don't let the law dictate your morality. Trans people face insurmountable mistreatment in healthcare. Maybe we don't want to go to a doctor. Maybe we don't have access to one geographically. Maybe we can't afford one. Maybe our parents don't want us to get care. There are so many reasons why we should be able to offer hormones through an informed consent model, perhaps even not involving doctors or therapists. This person is literally a creep. Number one, they just compared giving hormones to minors, sending out illegal drugs to crossing the street without a crosswalk. Those are in two totally different universes. And secondly, do not let the law dictate your morality? That is just such a generalized, huge cop-out for this entire conversation. You could say you don't want the law to dictate your morality about literally anything that you don't like. You want to murder somebody? Oh, sorry. The law doesn't dictate my morality. You wanted to assassinate the Supreme Court justices? Oops. It doesn't really fit in with my moral compass. That's not how it works. It is still illegal. That is how law and order operates. Just saying. And then the final thing is this person literally stated that they want to remove doctors and therapists 
from hormone treatment. What kind of twisted world do you live in? But the thing is, Eli saying this is not surprising because we are living in a culture and a society that is pushing this idea that gender affirming care is something that you can just flippantly do, that it is completely reversible. You can just stop hormones whenever you want. It has no long-term effects on you. No. That is an utter lie. You can stop taking hormones, but your body will never go back to normal. That's why they call it irreversible damage. You are making irreversible changes to your body, to your biology. That is not something that should be done outside of the medical sphere. They are already trying to criminalize therapists who are not giving gender affirming talk therapy. They're calling it conversion therapy. Now you're trying to remove doctors from prescribing medicine? Absolutely not. That is 100% lawless. That is so dangerous, especially for children. But again, it's unsurprising. They just started to say it publicly in front of cameras. So yeah, I know it's illegal, duh. So with all of this mounting evidence, now Matt is redirecting his attention and he is trying to reach Eli's PhD program. Matt tweeted out that he has reached out personally to the chancellor of UC Santa Cruz to ask her if she will investigate one of her university's PhD candidates, Eli Ehrlich, who has admitted to trafficking prescription drugs to minors. I've not heard back yet. He continued on and he said, I'll give it through today, but if I don't get a response from the administration, then it will be my responsibility as a concerned citizen to share the published contact information for administration officials and encourage thousands of people to reach out and ask for answers. The university also remained silent when Eli Elric suggested assassinating Supreme Court justices. Silence is not going to be an acceptable option anymore. So immediately, Eli started tweeting back and posting about this and claiming that Matt Walsh was was doxing him. First of all, it is not doxing if somebody is just sharing your contact information that is already online. Your professional PhD email information or the administration information for a university that literally anybody can look up in Google. That's not doxing. Exposing somebody's home address, their family's information, private things that are not online, that is doxing. Matt's not doing that to you. So calm the hell down. And to really drive the point home, somebody replied to Matt here and pointed out a few other high caliber PhD students that Eli is connected to. Three PhD students. One campaigns to destigmatize pedophilia. One masturbates to images of very young boys as part of his research. And one gives drugs to children to transition them. Maybe PhDs aren't what they're all cracked up to be. Literally, yes. If we have learned anything from the past few years, it is that number one, these PhD programs seem to attract some weird, weird, creepy people who want to have their fantasies validated by academia, to put it lightly. And two, that these institutions are 100% corrupted by a political agenda. That's the only reason why this disgusting, creepy bullshit is allowed to occur. There's no other reasoning. The whole thing is chaos. And Matt is right. Eli is part of a protected class. I mean, think about what we discussed yesterday. The FBI raided Trump, but they didn't raid Hunter Biden. They're going after Alex Jones, but they're not going after Fauci and White House health officials for lying. The FBI and the DOJ are fully political bodies. Will they actually go after Eli? I have no idea. We can hope because that would be the right and the lawful thing to do. But, you know, maybe they need a little bit of an extra push in the right direction. Like maybe this criminal being accused of sexual harassment and rape. You gotta be kidding. Post Millennial released this a couple of days ago. The headline is trans activist accused of sexual abuse boasts of plans to illegally distribute hormones to children. So first of all, they talk about the whole Matt Walsh libs of TikTok saga, everything that Eli is doing. And then they go into these allegations, which was first released by Redux magazine, who uncovered numerous accusations of violent sexual abuse by Eli. One of Ehrlich's alleged victims described how she entered into an emotionally and sexually abusive relationship with a trans student educational Resources co-founder and executive director Eli Ehrlich uh, when she began volunteering for the organization. Two posts were made in September and November of 2016 by a young woman who described how Ehrlich left her bloody after fisting her against her will. Another person wrote in 2016 about how Ehrlich sexually abused her and attempted to silence her through a smear campaign. And then the young woman reportedly committed suicide in 2019 after receiving an outpouring of violent threats and abuse from Ehrlich's followers. That's not all. Another woman said that Ehrlich had a reputation in the San Francisco Bay Area's queer community for being an admitted rapist and violently sexually abusing women. Still, more accusations have been documented. These are not the only ones. So this person is not only sending prescribed medicine to random people around the country, 
including minors, we have to drive home the fact that they are willing to send it to children, just willy-nilly. But this person is also an accused rapist, multiple times over. But this person is still so cocky that they are willing to post publicly about all of this stuff and still believe that they are above the law. People like this, who have been accused of violent crimes and are still doing illegal acts, are so confident that they will never be reported, they will never be deplatformed, they will never be arrested, that they are willing and they feel comfortable enough to post this crap online and publicize their illegal activity. I've said it before, but we live in a dumpster fire of a society. They want us silenced while they consistently and constantly act above the law and then simultaneously turn around and call us the fascists. If there was ever an example of gaslighting, this is it. Hey, 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 I can't believe that you were about to click off of this video without liking it first. That was honestly rude. Be better.